Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Profitable Cleaner Podcast. I'm your host, James Harper. Listen, today's episode is one that's just really been hot on my mind that um, I just want to dive into and really talk about uh, the importance and the specifics of having an all-encompassing business development plan for your cleaning company. The key word there is business development. Uh, Focus on the fact that I didn't just say a sales strategy, um, a lead generation plan. We need to be very specific and careful with the words we're using. And I wanna really focus in on business development, what that means, why that's important, and a few business development tactics and strategies that you can implement uh, today or this week and moving forward, that's really going to move the needle for your business, especially when it comes to your sales process. So first, let's break down um, kind of why this topic is is burning hot on my mind right now. Um, I'm sure you see it. We're in the cleaning space. Um, there's a lot of marketing companies out there. There's a lot of um, people claiming to be um, appointment setters and just a lot of lead generation talk. And, and that comes in all different shapes, sizes, and forms. Um, And I think a lot of it, um, if I'm just being frank with you, is a a ton of BS. Uh, There's no get-rich-quick scheme in life, and that couldn't be more true for this industry. You guys know as well as I do the importance of rolling up your sleeves and actually doing the work. And when it comes to increasing your cleaning company sales, it's no different. And uh, many times, as business owners and just really kind of as cleaning operators... Uh, we need to save time. We need to find uh, better efficiencies within our, our business. Um, we're worried about our operations. Um, so therefore, we, we want the quickest um, kind of outsourced fix when it comes to our sales process. Uh, listen, I think outsourcing your sales is, uh, is key, and I think it can be very critical for your business. So this has nothing to do with uh, um, outsourcing your sales. It's about having an all-encompassed business development plan. So let's talk about really what business development is. It's not get rich quick and it's not as sexy as a lot of these uh, marketing and sales companies make it seem. Uh, business development is is just that. Having a plan in place that actually develops new lines of business and new ways on how you get business. Is that through partnerships? Is that through uh, pounding the pavement and prospecting? Is that through traditional marketing, events? It's really all-encompassing marketing. I like to think of it as a table. A table stands on four legs. That's what builds the solid foundation of the table, right? Well, if you take away two of those legs, and let's just say that's two avenues of uh, potential business development, lead generation, sales, um, all of a sudden you have a very shaky foundation and that table is not going to be able to support a lot of things on top of it. If you take away three of its legs, you don't even have a table. You have something that's not even functional. Um, So to have a business development strategy, you really need to hit on four key things. You need to hit on, yes, your cold sales process, how you generate business from people that don't know who you are, that don't know who your cleaning company is, that you know you can do good work for and you know that they have a cleaning company. That's kind of like your cold sales process. You need to have a process in place for that. You need your traditional avenues, your networking, your event marketing, your um, just kind of your network and your community. How are you gaining business from there? Number three, your referral and word of mouth program. Again, not a sexy channel, but I think a lot of cleaning companies can attest to this, that the best sales strategy is a happy client. A happy customer at the end of the day will talk about your service and be the best reigning endorsement that you can possibly get. And are we being intentional? Ask yourself this, are you being intentional? with the referrals and with your word of mouth strategy? Are you asking for reviews? Are you finding out ways that maybe you can have a property manager refer you uh, to another property manager that's within their network? Or can you get multiple properties um, within their portfolio, for instance? We need to be very intentional with how we are utilizing our happy customers and uh, how can that generate business? 
And then last but not least, just kind of overall brand marketing and being, and it's kind of like our wild card creative palette. How can we do different things to see what works and what doesn't that might generate business? Are you actually out there in the community? Are you involved with these trade organizations? And are you putting your name out there um, within these organizations and gaining business? Um, and then obviously as the owner operator, um, are you kind of viewing any potential scenario that you might be in as a way to see if you can add value, get into a facility and generate some sort of business from it? So it's really kind of like a, a multi-level approach. A true business development strategy takes a ton of work and intentionality um, and it takes it takes a lot of effort to put in place. But but here's the, 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 the key thing here. It's one of the best things you can do for your business. Uh, this is where we have to roll up our sleeves and we have to put in the work. We have to actually put a plan in place, be intentional with our efforts. We have to be very clear, and it's hard to be clear at times on exactly who we're selling to, what um, the value add of our services is and our company is, and exactly how we're going to get in the door, and what different avenues um, and and levels, different legs, are, are we going to try to generate business with. Um, it's the difference between thinking profit versus paycheck, thinking long-term versus short-term. A lot of these uh, sales uh, cleaning uh, speaks that I hear um, and just like a lot of the stuff that I read about appointment setting and uh, hey, cold email generated, uh, 100 new appointments, yada, yada, yada. A lot of that is paycheck talk. It's small appointment talk. It's small potatoes. It's small opportunity. It's short-term thinking. Of course, we all want to buy a list of leads, email those leads, and set more appointments that are qualified. That's a no-brainer. We all want that for our cleaning company. We all need that. But the truth is, very rarely is that how it works. We have to really hone a strategy and be intentional with our plan and executing that strategy um, when we're out there in the field working. If you look at your business now, I can promise you, you have generated business from different avenues. Some of you guys, it's straight up inbound marketing. Some of you, it's straight up cold sales. I bet you a, uh, a lot of you guys can relate to just the fact that, uh, hey, a happy customer, word of mouth, referral goes a long way. Um, a lot of you guys knew someone who, who just needed it within your personal network. Your cleaning company has generated business uh, in multiple, um, through multiple avenues. So are you being intention intentional with those avenues? And I think that's where a lot of us fall short, myself included. Listen, this isn't a perfect, uh, this isn't me talking about, hey, I have a perfect pitch and I have a perfect plan and strategy. Absolutely not. Um, so can we actually be focused with our effort? Can we be very clear with our plan and actually put multiple legs in place that will generate us new business? That's ultimately what a business development plan is. And the hard part about that business plan isn't just executing. It's one, getting clear. Once you're clear, you know exactly what you need to do. And then number two, having the resources to actually manage the ongoing um, portion of the, of the biz dev plan. I mean, listen, if, if you're out there in the field networking, that's not a one-time deal. You're out there consistently. Being constant goes very far, especially in the world of sales. And I think being consistent as a commercial cleaner, that's a competitive advantage because of a lot of cleaners are not consistent and you know that better than I do. So I'm gonna give you three kind of under the radar things that you can start implementing in your business right now and a few trade organizations that I think you should be like signing up for right after you watch this video or hear this podcast. And I just think they're um, underutilized avenues and legs of business that I know develop or generate really good leads for commercial cleaners and that develop really strong relationships with facility directors. Um, so let's, this is kind of like on that networking leg, right? 
Um, I think every commercial cleaner, owner, operator, sales manager needs to be a part of a lot of these trade groups. And I'm going to give you three trade groups to sign up for literally today. The first one is IFMA, International Facility Management Association. IFMA has a ton of chapters across the country. And I really think that you need to you need to find a chapter that's closest to your market. Maybe it's in your market. You need to pay the membership fee. Um, I don't know what it is off the top of my head. And you need to dive in. You need to go ahead, dive in, jump into IFMA, and start really just adding value to that organization and to the members, especially at your local chapter. Now, why is IFMA important? Why is it important to you? International Facility Management Association. Just listen to the title. There's a ton of facility managers, a lot of building operators in these groups. And when they get together, I can tell you firsthand, because I know a lot of people within these groups, they talk about the value of keeping their facilities safe, clean, and functional. Well, that's exactly what us in the commercial cleaning realm, that's what we do. That's what we know how to do. So we need to make sure that we're, we're in that group adding value. You have a lot of value you can add to that group. The second trade organization that I, I know you need to join today, and this one is not heard of and not as popular, um, especially in the cleaning space as IFMA, is APA. APA Leadership. Um, and that's leadership in the educational facilities realm. So you know, some of the biggest contracts, especially with day port or premium clients, are universities. We've seen a lot of uh, universities uh, turn into really great jobs. Personally, my wife is a facility director at a university that has a $3.2 million annual commercial cleaning contract. How would that change your business? Being in the door for universities, even if they're one-time cleans, um, are great opportunities. Well, APA services facility professionals just for universities. So if you have any type of experience cleaning a uh, university or doing strip and wax or flooring at a university, you need to be a, a part of APA. It's just that simple and straightforward. Just leadership in the educational realm um, for facilities. That's exactly what this group is. And if you can add value to what it's like, the importance of keeping your university's facilities safe, upkept, and clean, that's a group you need to be a part of. Again, I'm not sure of the cost. You're going to have to do some research. I'm actually going to do a follow-up episode specifically on these organizations. The third one is one that I know you've heard of and maybe you're even a part of. It's your local chamber of commerce. Again, not a sexy play. I get but again, we're talking business development in here and when we're doing business development it's not a get rich quick scheme we got to roll up our sleeves we got to do our work and part of rolling up our sleeves and doing the work is joining our local chamber of commerce groups it's literally in our backyard we're networking with local business owners and more than anything we can learn the makeup of their building their facility we can uh, develop a relationship with people even if they're currently working with the cleaner uh, what cleaner are they working with get some a potential insight on your competition we can go ahead and learn, okay, is that small business owner um, a weekly reoccurring clean or does he do it three times a week? Or wow, that one really surprised me. Who would have thought that he actually probably needs a day porter? Um, this is, it just gives us insight into our local market. And then, I mean, how key is that? It's a competitive advantage. And it's not unusual for the local chamber of commerce members to look first at their chamber if they ever need a resource in whatever realm in this realm we're talking cleaning and you're giving back to your community in that sense you're being part of the local business community and you know the goal is to generate some relationships that ultimately uh turn profitable for you so join your local chamber of commerce it's mostly a low um, annual fee and it's definitely worth it um, mostly a once a month commitment and and you're meeting in person and and you're really just uh, developing strong relationships with other business owners um, within the Chamber of Commerce more than anything you're also going to great grab some great business insight on on how to run your business better and I think that's always key so guys I just wanted to jump on here and talk about are we talking quick hit sales strategies or are we really talking, hey, let's get real about our sales process and let's actually develop a business development.
uh, process. Um, business development is really the mind shift that the industry needs to take if, you, if you're thinking profit versus paycheck. And I can tell you guys firsthand that uh, when you start thinking profit versus paycheck, the, the deals that you want and that you hope for and you dream of start to come to fruition because we take a, long, a, a longer term mindset. It's not a short term mindset and we're not making short term moves. We're playing chess versus checkers in that sense. And that's really the difference between a business development approach and a quick hit sales strategy. So, hey, listen, if you enjoyed this episode, please share it with a friend, share it with your staff, share it with another um, cleaner that you might be connected with at The Profitable Cleaner and at dayporter.com. Our mission is to give you the best sales insight into the commercial cleaning industry. Um, It's what we know, it's what we're passionate about. You guys are awesome at running your business and understanding the operational side of the industry. And we wanna add value and giving you as much as we can that will help you grow your business. If you like this podcast, definitely um, share it with someone. Give us a like, give us a follow, um, rate us on iTunes. Or um, right now we're, we're accepting the first 100 people into our private um, Profitable Cleaner Facebook group. Again, it's just a community where we're going to talk shop, we're going to talk sales. And I uh, would love to have you a part of it. Uh, so with that being said, I look forward to the next episode. Have some kick-ass guests coming up that I know you're going to love. Other uh, facilities pros, property managers, and cleaning owners you can learn from. Um, So, yeah, the first initial kind of wave of content we put out there has been received well. And uh, we just want to hear from you. We want to hear about your wins and uh, hope you join our community. So go sell some more life-changing contracts and talk to you here soon.